Hey Colts, um, it's Mrs. Aladdin. Today is Sunday and I'm going to do a little more reading from the book, The One and Only Ivan. I hope you're having a really great day. Um, it's a beautiful day out, even a little warm. Um, so I hope you're getting outside to get some play and fresh air in um, and that you're doing all right. And if you're not, I hope you're letting us know or let your mom and dad know um, so we can figure out how to support you and, and help you through things. So anyways, we're going to keep reading from um, this book, um, which I'm really enjoying. I hope you are too. Um, you'll remember that the chapters in this book have a little bit of a unique format so there's lots of sort of little mini chapters um, and the last chapter we read was talking about how Ivan gets to um, enjoy spending time with Julia and Julia is the daughter of the person who cleans um, the big top every evening and Julia is the one that inspires Ivan to draw as well so this chapter is called drawing Bob I love Julia's pictures of Bob she draws him flying across the page a blur of feet and fur she draws him motionless, pecking out from behind a trash can or the soft tail of my belly. Sometimes in her drawings, Julia gives Bob wings or a lion's mane. Once she gave him a tortoise shell. But the best thing she ever gave him wasn't a drawing. Julia gave Bob his name. For a long time, no one knew what to, knew what to call Bob. Now and then, a mall worker would try to approach him with a tidbit. Here, doggy, they'd call, holding out a french fry. Come on, pooch, they'd say. How about a little piece of sandwich? that he would always vanish into the shadows before anyone could get too close. One afternoon, Julia decided to draw the little dog curled up at the corner of my domain. First, she watched him for a long time, chewing on her thumbnail. I could tell she was looking at him the way an artist looks at the world when she's trying to understand it. Finally, she grabbed her pencil and set to work. When she was finished, she held up the page. There he was, the tiny, big-eared dog. He was smart and cunning, but his gaze was wistful. Under the picture were three bold, confident marks, circled in black. I was pretty certain it was a word, even though I couldn't read it. Julia's father peered over her shoulder. That's him exactly, he said, nodding. He pointed to the circle marks. I didn't realize his name was Bob, he said. Me neither, said Julia. She smiled. I had to draw him first. This chapter is called Bob and Julia. Bob will not let humans touch him. He says their scent upsets his digestion. But every now and again, I see him sitting at Julia's feet. Her fingers move gently right behind his right ear. There's a picture of them sitting on a bench together. He is so cute. Do you see him? How cute he is down there? This chapter is called Mark. Oh, sorry, Mac, excuse me. Usually Mac leaves after the last show, but tonight he's in his office working late. When he's done, he stops by my domain and stares at me for a long time while he drinks from a brown bottle. George joins him, broom in hand, and Mac says the thing he always says. How about that game last night? And business has been slow, but it'll get better, you'll see. And don't forget to empty the trash. Mac glances over at the picture Julia is drawing. What are you making, he asks. It's for my mom, Julia says. It's a flying dog. She holds up her drawing, eyeing it critically. She likes airplanes and dogs. Hmm, Mac murmurs, sounding unconvinced. He looks at George. How's the wife doing, anyway? About the same, George said. She has good days and bad days. Yeah, don't we all, Mac says. Mac starts to leave and then pauses. He reaches into his pocket, pulled out a crumpled green bill, and presses it into George's hand. Here, Mac says with a shrug, buy the kids some more crayons. Mac is already out the door before George can yell, thanks. This chapter is called Not Sleepy. Stella, I say after Julia and her father go home, I can't sleep. Of course you can, she says. You're king of the sleepers. Shh, Bob says from his perch on my belly. I'm dreaming about chili fries. I'm tired, I say, but not sleepy. What are you tired of, Stella asks. I think for a while it's hard to put into words. Gorillas are not complainers. We're dreamers, poets, philosophers, nap takers. I don't know exactly, I kick at my tire swing. I think I'm a little tired of my domain. That's because it's a cage, Bob tells me. Bob's not always tactful. I know, says Stella. It's a very small dom domain. And you're a very big gorilla, Bob adds. Stella, I ask, yes. I noticed you were limping more than usual today. Is your leg bothering you? Just a little, Stella answers. I sigh, Bob resettles, his ears flick. He drools a bit, but I don't mind, I'm used to it. Try eating something, Stella says. That always makes you happy. I eat an old brown carrot. It doesn't help, but I don't tell Stella. She needs to sleep. You could try remembering a good day, Stella suggests. That's what I do when I can't sleep. 
Stella remembers every moment since she was born, every scent, every sub sunset, every slight, every victory. You know I can't remember much, I say. There's a difference, Stella says gently, between can't remember and won't remember. That's true, I admit. Not remembering can be difficult, but I've had lots of time to work on it. Memories are precious, Stella adds. They help us, they tell, they help tell us who we are. Try remembering all your keepers. You always like Carl, the one with the harmonica. Carl, yes. I remember how he gave me a coconut when I was still a juvenile. It took me all day to open it. I try to recall other keepers I've known, the humans who clean my domain and prepared my food and sometimes kept me company. There was Juan who poured Pepsis into my waiting mouth and Katrina who used to poke me with a broom when I was sleeping and Ellen who said, who sang, how much is that monkey in the window with a sad smile while she scrubbed my water bowl. And then there was Gerald who once brought me a big box of fat, sweet strawberries. Gerald was my favorite keeper. I haven't had a real keeper in a long time. Max says he doesn't have the money to pay for an eight babysitter. These days, George cleans my cage and Mac is the one who feeds me. When I think about all the people who've taken care of me, mostly it's Mac I recall day in and day out, year after year. Mac who bought me and raised me and says I'm no longer cute. As if a silverback could ever be cute. Moonlight falls on the frozen carousel, on the silent popcorn stand, and on the stall of leather belts that smell like long gone cows. The heavy work of Stella's breathing sounds like the wind in the trees, and I wait for sleep to find me. This chapter is called The Beetle. Mac gives me a new black crayon and a fresh pile of paper. It's time to work again. I smell the crayon, roll it in my hands, Press the sharp point against my palm. There's nothing I love more than a new crayon. I search my domain for something to draw. What is black? An old banana peel would work, but I've eaten them all. Not tag is brown. My little blue pool is blue. The yogurt raisin I'm saving for this afternoon is white, at least on the outside. Something moves in the corner. I have a visitor. A shiny beetle has stopped by. Bugs often wander through my domain on their way to somewhere else. Hello, beetle, I say. He freezes, silent. Bugs never want to chat. The beetle's an attractive bug with a body like a glossy nut. He's black as a starless night. That's it. I'll draw him. It's hard making a picture of something new. I don't get the chance that often, but I try. I look at the beetle, who's been kind enough not to move, then back at my paper. I draw his body, his legs, his little antennae, his sour expression. I'm lucky. The beetle stays all day. Usually bugs don't linger when they visit. I'm beginning to wonder if he's feeling all right. Bob, who's been known to munch on bugs from time to time, offers to eat them. I tell Bob that won't be necessary. I'm just finishing my last picture when Mac returns. George and Julia are with him. Mac enters my domain and picks up a drawing. What the heck is this? He asks. Beats me what Ivan thinks he's drawing. This is a picture of nothing, a big black nothing. Julia is standing outside my domain. Can I see, she asks. Mac holds up my picture to the window. Julia tilts her head. She squeezes one eye shut, and then she opens her eye and stares at my domain. I know, she exclaimed. It's a beetle. See that beetle over there by Ivan's pool? Man, I just sprayed this place for bug. bugs. Mac walks over to the beetle and lifts his foot. Before Mac can stomp, the beetle skitters away, disappearing through a crack in the wall. Mac turns back to my drawings. So you figure this is a beetle, huh? If you say so, kid. Oh, that's a beetle for sure, Julia says, smiling at me. I know a beetle when I see one. It's nice, I think, having a fellow artist around. All right, we're going to pause there. And here's a picture of the beetle. I don't think this is the beetle that, that um, Ivan drew. I think this is the actual beetle. He does have long antennae, huh? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed. We'll read some more tomorrow. Take care. Take care, Colts. Be, be safe and be um, good to each other. Bye.